So, a good friend, the genetically modified skeptic. Yeah, Junis. Remember Junis? Remember Drew? I had him on the channel back in August, I think it was at this point. So, our good friend of the channel, genetically modified skeptic, put out a video entitled, Stop Lying About Atheists. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty hardcore. And, you know, it, it was typical Drew, reasonable points, well-articulated if I had to say what the main underlying thrust or the main underlying point of what he was trying to get at, it was that if you want to understand or if you want to know why somebody is an atheist, the best thing to do is ask. Don't presume to know why somebody is a certain way. Ask them and then listen to the answers. Now, I totally and completely agree with that as advice. As a matter of fact, that is why I started interviewing atheists on my channel, because I was curious. I mean, I wanted to know. Here you have, like, let's take Drew, for example. Here you have one day you have this nice young Christian man growing up in Texas. Turn around one day, he's a baby-eating baby eating atheist. What on earth went wrong? What on earth happened? Why, Drew? Why? Why do evil, Drew? So I got him on the channel, and I asked him, you know, why, why? how he became an atheist, what was his commitment to his church life. I really wanted to know. And here's the thing to keep in mind. This is good advice, even if your agenda is ultimately evangelical or ideological, if you want to ultimately combat an ideology or oppose it. Even if that's your ultimate agenda, it is still really good advice to bring somebody in and listen very carefully to what they have to say because the more you understand them, the better off you'll be. Period. Period. I mean, I had the Godless Engineer on my channel, for example, on Friday. And yeah, it was fun. We had a good time. But he's a mythicist and a mythicist. And I don't agree with the position of myth mythicism. I really don't. But uh, at the same time, I don't really know all that much about it. And I certainly don't know how he came to be a mythicist. So I started asking him. And I'm not even 100% sure how people who are mythicists are supporting the position. What, what I mean, I know they're using something for evidence to come to the conclusion they come to, but I'm not, I wasn't 100% sure what that was, what books they were looking into, who they considered. There was so much for me to know about the subject before I would even bother. I mean, ultimately, yeah, maybe one day I would debate someone on that subject and try to engage them and prove them, you know, and try to challenge that opinion to get to, to prove it wrong. But even if that is my ultimate agenda, it still serves me in the short term to just listen. It serves me in the short term to just listen to try to understand a, a, if and if my goal is evangelical, even better. It's, it serves my interest strategically and long term if my approach is, first of all, it's an easier way to interact with people. No, very few people take issue if you're just asking them questions. That's why there's, there's, no, there's very little melodrama on my channel. I just ask people questions. There's no real, like, uh, you know. But at the same time, even if your goal is ultimately to challenge an ideology or to you know, promote a certain worldview. It's still in your best interest to do it. It's, it serves you long term. The more you understand about people in general, period, in every situation, the more you understand, the more you listen to people, the, the better helps you to, you know, find out what's really going on in how they formulate their beliefs that they have. And ultimately, that's really more important than anything else, as far as I'm concerned. So... Just food for thought on the subject, that's all. Just a short little video, you know, watch the video, and this is my genuine response. Um, I'll do something on atheists and foxholes. That's a, that's a pretty interesting subject right there. So that's all for now. Amen.